Hey, we're going to continue the discussion about bringing lasting change into your life. And what I want to do today is I want to help you figure out, maybe come to the conclusion of the most important first steps that you can take about bringing lasting change in your life. It doesn't matter what you're trying to change. These steps, this particular step today I'm going to talk to you about, it's going to change your life. So we've been talking um, last week and this week about change. We're talking about how do we implement change that's going to last and how are we going to make it happen and keep it consistent in our life. And I think that's probably where all of us really, really struggle. Now, you know, I did quite a bit of research before, you know, I stepped into this conversation and, you know, it was for, honestly, it was for personal reasons. I was kind of a little selfish. Um, I began to realize that there were things in my life that I wanted to change. My biggest struggle was was having change that was consistent. And so I tried to figure out what do I need to do um, to overcome this, this propensity I have to constantly make a change only to find myself going back on it, going, oh my gosh, you know, that didn't stick. And now I'm, I'm, I'm back on it again. For me, it's, it's weight loss. It's, it's, it's particular disciplines in my Bible study. Um, it's me staying connected with people. Um, there's a lot of things that, that I'm not so good at. And I tried to figure out what is my biggest issue. And, and what I found out was, was this, is that my greatest liability, literally the number one thing that keeps me from enjoying lasting change, unfortunately, is me. And so I began to do the research and I began to do the study and think, you know, how can I set the table um, where I'm overcoming myself, my own emotional problems or, or emotional energy that lacks when I began to, you know, get into a habit that I don't like so much or try to go in a behavior direction that I don't like so much. How do I overcome me? And so um, this is what this is going to be about. That's what we're going to talk about over the next little bit. One of the things that that came to my, dis, my, my disposal, if you will, as I began to study this is I kept hearing things like habit, 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 habit. I mean, everybody talks about you need habits in your life, certain habits in your life, and that's what it's going to take to bring about lasting change. And this is true. Um, it's absolutely true. Really, probably what got us into trouble was bad habits, and, and what will help us in the long run is good habits. But here's the problem. By definition, a habit is a consistent set of behaviors that have been done for such a long time that they become second nature or, or they're just unconscious. We do them without even thinking about it. And, you know, one of the things that I've discovered when it comes to habits is that obviously it takes a while for a habit to, to set in, to, to grow roots. But secondly, the thing about a habit is, is and I'm going to have a whole podcast about this where we'll discuss habits. It's not going to be today. But what else I discovered was is that habits, there's certain behaviors that can't become habits. They're, they're, there's too many variables that can mess them up and, and they take too much discipline. You can make a habit of which leg you put in your pants in the morning when you're putting your pants on. You can make a habit of the particular direction that you take when you're driving to work in the morning. You can make a habit out of brushing your teeth, but I'm going to make an argument that it's a lot harder to make a habit out of something that's hard to do and that that is going to take a lot of self-discipline. And so I'll talk about that in a future podcast. And so I want to tell you this. I don't believe the first move in your life when you're trying to bring about lasting change is a habit. I think what's better than a habit in the beginning are boundaries, is setting what I call hard boundaries. Now, what do I mean by hard boundaries? I wrote myself a definition of what a hard boundary is. And, and a hard boundary, by my definition, is this. It is a painful, almost immediate, irrevocable cost for a choice or a behavior. Let me say that one more time. It is a painful, painful, almost immediate, irrevocable cost for a choice or behavior. Um, now we've had we've had boundaries or we've had things that influence us to make bad decisions. For instance, for me, overeating, um, what influenced me to do it? I enjoyed it. It tasted good. It gave me satisfaction. Um, but consistently, there wasn't a hard boundary. There wasn't a cost with it. So if I'm going to change that behavior, I've discovered and through some research that I've done. Setting hard boundaries is a really, really, really good thing. In fact, for me, it, it absolutely um, changed my life. And so in Katie Milkman's book, and I mentioned that in the first podcast, I think the title of the book is The Power to Change. It's terrible that I don't know the title of the book that I've listened to a number of times. 
she relates a story when she's talking about hard boundaries. And she relates a story of a guy that, that she's a professor and this guy comes to her class once a year because he's so good on this particular topic. He experienced so much life change through it, hard boundaries. He comes to her class and he tells this story. She said, every year he tells the same story. He said, imagine if you will, you're in a restaurant, okay? And um, it's a cheeseburger restaurant, a restaurant that makes the best cheeseburgers in the whole wide world. These are better than any other cheeseburger anywhere on the planet. You're there with a group of friends and the waiter asks you, what would be your favorite way to have a cheeseburger? Now, he doesn't ask if you want a cheeseburger. He says, what's your favorite way to have a cheeseburger? And you say, you know, for me, I'll just give you my story. Mine would be um, the patty is off of a big old thick patty that's off of a charcoal grill. I mean, like the one in your backyard. A big chunk of Velveeta cheese, some Miracle Whip on it. And I wouldn't use a bun. I'd use fresh white bread, the kind that sticks to the roof of your mouth. That would be mine. A purple onion on it, a little bit of lettuce, maybe a slice of tomato, and bam. We are in business right there. And they said, he says, well, you know, in the story, he relates, he says, well, what if this waiter brings out your absolute favorite choice of cheeseburger, brings it to you to the table, and he says, I made it to your specifications. Here it is. Best cheeseburger restaurant in the world. He's made you the cheeseburger to your specifications. Now, the guy asked the class, he goes on, he says, okay, so how many of you maybe if you were trying to lose weight or you're trying to make healthier choices at that particular moment would show enough restraint to say, no, thank you. I don't want that cheeseburger. How many of you would do that? And I think if the, if the truth be known, and I'm, I'm talking to us, is that it'd be hard to, to not do that. It'd be hard not to take that cheeseburger. It'd be hard not to, you know, they put that much work into it. I mean, so everybody got a, you know, they got a cheeseburger the way you wanted it. And everybody at the table's eating cheeseburgers. For me to go, no, nah, I'm not going to eat that. I just, I don't know that I would do that. He said, now let me, let me add a variable to it. And I want you guys to think about this. So this guy brings you the cheeseburger of your design. Everybody at the table's eating cheeseburgers. You're at the best cheeseburger restaurant in the world. Um, and then he says, but what if that cheeseburger would cost you and you had to pay for it $500? Could you show restraint then? And everybody in the class, Katie says, says, absolutely, I could show restraint. Um, all of a sudden, you have a hard boundary. See, that's what a hard boundary is. A hard boundary is a painful, almost immediate, irrevocable cost for a choice or a behavior. You would be amazed at how many things in your life are not a problem for you because they come with a boundary. So let, let me give you an example. After I heard Katie Milkman's story of this guy who gives that illustration in her class, I thought to myself, I thought, you know, I like lobster. I mean, I really do. I like lobster a lot. Not only do I like lobster, I love snow crabs. I mean, I love snow crabs. Now, I don't have a problem eating lots of lobster. I don't have a problem eating lots of snow crab. You want to know why? Because they have a hard boundary. They're too expensive. I mean, the truth is I'm not going to eat a snow crab. You want to know why? Because it's a ton of money and it's money that I don't want to spend. And I'm like, it's just too much. That's a hard boundary. Here's what's cool about this about this reality for, for you and I. If we will establish hard boundaries on the particular behaviors in our life that we want to change, we might find that that gives us the added horsepower to be able to sustain change that we couldn't have otherwise. Now, Katie Milkman goes on to tell this story that the guy who tells us about the cheeseburgers in her class, she said the reason why she invites him is that he set a hard boundary on behaviors in his life and he was successful at it. She said his story is powerful. She said it brings about a lot of change. And his story is basically this. He found himself about, I think, 40 or 60 pounds overweight. He was a pack-a-day smoker. Um, and there were things in his life he wanted to do. One of the things he'd always wanted to do is he wanted to run a marathon. So not only that, he always wanted to write a book. And he said, you know, these are four goals. I needed to lose weight. I needed to stop smoking. I, needed, I wanted to run a marathon. And I wanted to write a book. And he said, so I made up my mind that I was going to establish a hard boundary so that I might accomplish those goals. And so what he does is he takes, I think she said $15,000, and he puts this money in a holding. And that holding is going to monitor this guy's goals that he set. They'll have a set of gauges to look at. And his was, at the end of one year, he wanted to have lost the extra weight. He wanted to have stopped smoking completely. He wanted to have run a marathon, and he wanted to have written a book all in one year. And so he takes his life savings, that's his hard boundary cost, he takes his life savings, he puts it in this holding, he writes a contract, and he agrees at the end of one year, they're going to evaluate his goals. And if he achieved them, he gets the money back. If he doesn't, then he loses the money and it's given away to his favorite charity. 
pretty cool hard boundary. And I know you think, well, that's kind of radical, but think about it for a second. These things work. I could see that working. He said, now, every time I would reach for food that I didn't need to have, or I would reach for a cigarette that I, I had committed to not smoking, I immediately thought, is that cigarette worth $15,000? Is that piece of food, is that donut worth $15,000? Is that, you know, when I need to be typing on working on my book and I don't want to, is the rest or the laziness that I'm going to have right now, is it worth $15,000? See, the boundary, hard boundaries cause you and I to evaluate a cost. When we evaluate a cost and we have a hard boundary, it brings about change in our life. I've seen it happen as a pastor. Um, I, I remember there was a particular guy in our church that had been caught manufacturing methamphetamine. He was waiting for sentencing and his, his sentencing phase of his trial would be six months um, from the time he was already found guilty. For that six months, he would have to do mandatory drug testing. Now, this is a guy who had been a meth user almost every single day. He'd been manufacturing meth for a number of years. He was a young guy, but he'd been in the drug business for a while. For that six months, while he was waiting, awaiting prosecution, he stayed completely clean. He didn't do any meth whatsoever. He went to meetings. Uh, he went to NA meetings. Um, he kept himself clean for six months waiting on that. What, what made him, what motivated him? Well, what motivated him was all it would take is one failed drug, drug test, and he may be going to prison for up to 50 years. That's a hard boundary. It, it has, so remember, hard boundary has to have a painful, almost immediate, irrevocable cost for the choice or behavior. It has amazing power over you. Think about this. How many times have you known somebody who habitually overeats, they've been overweight, they abuse their body, they smoke cigarettes, but then they have a heart attack. And all of a sudden they're at the hospital and they're going, the doctors are like, hey man, your arteries are clogged. Here's the thing, you're gonna die if you keep doing this. Now I know there's some people that will, they'll just eat through that. But there's a lot of people, though, they get that and they go, that is the hard boundary they needed. I have to change what I eat and do or I'm going to die, bottom line. And so we've seen people make changes that way. We've seen people say, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. I've seen it in marriage counseling as a pastor as well, where a man is you know, mean to his wife, he's inconsiderate, doesn't care about her, then all of a sudden divorce is on the horizon. She threatens it and she's serious about it. And all of a sudden he's caring, he's compassionate, he's listening, he's focused, he's tuned into the marriage. What gave him the motivation? What pushed him? A hard boundary. A hard boundary was a critical part of that. So you and I, we need to apply hard boundaries to the goals that we ultimately want to achieve. So now, we need to figure out what is the fee? What's that painful fee? And, and for all of us, it's going to be different. Um, and I'll tell you about mine in just a moment. But you need to discover for yourself what could be the possible boundary fee. What is it going to cost you for that habit that you're trying to change or that behavior that you don't want anymore or or that hang-up that you've got in your life? If you're wanting to change that, what, what, what could be the possible cost of it? Well, number one, um, maybe it's a hobby that you absolutely enjoy. Let's say, for instance, you love golfing or fly fishing, or maybe you love painting or something else like that. Put that on the line. You're going to put that in the contract. If I don't achieve these particular goals based on these gauges that I've set, I never get to do that again. I have to take all of my art supplies. I have to, I have to sell them, and I give the money to charity. I know you think, well, that's kind of extreme, Scott. It is, but you know what? Do you really want to change? I mean, we discussed last week where Jesus asked the person that was beside the pool of Bethesda, do you really want to get well? Well, there's a fee. You've got to have a real hard boundary. If it's not really something that costs you, you've had plenty of opportunity to put in place change that didn't have a fee. If that worked, then you wouldn't need this, but it didn't work. So you need a boundary. Or, or, or how about this? Um, some item that you value. Let's say, for instance, um, it's grandpa's violin that you know he used when he played on stage. I have to sell that and give the money to charity. Or maybe it's a car that you drive that's you really, really like. I've got to get rid of that car and I have to get a you know a, a Prius. I don't know. You, you have to do something like that. What is the fee? You have to come up with that fee um, for you. It's, it has to be any item of value or something that you enjoy. Maybe it could be money. For me, it couldn't be money. Let me tell you why. Unlike the guy that Katie Milkman uses as an example, my money is a joint money account and it would affect my family. I couldn't take my family's savings, put it in an account and let that be my hard boundary for my change that I need. So what I did was I build Mustangs. That's some, one of the hobbies that I have. And so I have a particular 1968 Fastback Mustang that, that I'm building. It's, it's mostly finished. Uh, no, it's partially finished. 
it's worth a considerable amount of money. That's my hard boundary. If I don't meet my goals based on the gauges that I agreed to, that car is sold and the money's given to the church. No questions asked. And um, that's my hard boundary. Um, you know, basically your hard boundary, the fee for your hard boundary probably should be something that you wouldn't consider giving up. You know, I wouldn't even consider giving that up. So that's my hard boundary. So how do you set a hard boundary? Let me give you a few things to think about so this doesn't go too long. First of all, you need a particular goal. For the guy that we talked about, he had four goals. That's a lot. I would consider one. For me, mine was weight loss. That's the goal that I've set. My goal is, is that I want to get to my target weight and I want to maintain it for a period of time. So my goal is, is for the next 10 years to be losing the weight or maintaining the weight that I need to lose. So I'm taking my hard boundary, my cost, my Mustang, I'm tying it up in a 10-year goal. In other words, I can't do anything with this car um, for the next 10 years. It's going to be tied up. Now, you have to have a set of gauges to go with that goal. So the goal is I want to lose um, down to my target weight, and then I want to maintain it for a period of time. Maybe you want to quit smoking and maintain a non-smoking lifestyle for the next X number of years. Or maybe you're saying, I want to get my degree. I need to go four years to college, and it's going to be a lot of sacrifice. So that's the goal that you set. Or, or maybe you're saying, man, my Bible study and devotional time isn't what it needs to be, and I keep handling it willy-nilly. What is the boundary? What's the cost? So you have to have a goal, then you have to have a cost. So what's the goal? The goal is to study my Bible um, and read through the entire Bible within this next year. That could be the goal. So you need goals, but then you need a set of gauges. How am I going to evaluate it? For me, um, it's weight loss. I'm weighing every week or measuring every week, um, and I have to show improvement every month. That could mean I lose a pound. That could mean I, in a month. That, may, that could mean I have to show improvement every single month or my boundary um, um, fee has to be enforced. So if I don't show improvement this month, that means that I didn't lose weight or inches this month, then that means, or get to my target target weight and maintain it, that means the Mustang goes away. So that's, that's, your, that's my gauges that I look at. You need to set your own gauges and it's gonna be different for different people. Um, you have to have a goal, then you have to set some gauges, then you have to have um, a contractual cost. That's whatever it is that's gonna be the fee for me not achieving my goals. That's your hard boundary cost. Um, then you need a time frame. For me, it's 10 years. Maybe for you, it's just a year. The, the guy that Katie Milkman talks about, his goals and gauges were all fleshed out in a single year. Maybe that's where you are. Maybe you have a year of college left and you wanna finish college. Well, you put a, a boundary fee on there. You set a goal with a set of gauges that you're gonna be looking at to track your progress. And you have to have a contract that executes the fact that if you don't do what you said you're gonna do, it's going to cost you something. If there's no real tangible fee, then this is not a hard boundary. If you're not afraid somewhat of that fee, then this is not a good hard boundary. If losing whatever it is that you've put on that contract doesn't bother you immensely, then it's probably not a good boundary. The only way we're going to break our desire, our fleshly desire for things that we don't need to pursue, or we're going to change a behavior that we kind of enjoy we're going to have to put some hard boundaries and some fees on, on that. And then we have to execute that. That's a hard boundary. I don't know what that looks like for you, but you need to work it out. I think if you set some hard boundaries, I think you'd be amazed at how much extra horsepower that gives you. I have seen so many instances where people have a hard boundary, maybe enforced in their life. I've seen them have self-discipline where they've never had self-discipline before. I've seen people, like I told you, heart attack patient or, or a person, their arteries are clogging up or whatever. Someone going with a health issue and all of a sudden they come out they're vegan. They're, you know, they're eating right. They're, you know, they definitely resist the cheeseburger when they need to, because every time they reach for that thing that they know they don't need, they consider the cost. That's going to cost me something. Um, so this is a hard boundary. This is a great way to bring about change in your life. And I'm going to tell you something. This is one of those good things that you need to probably apply. And I think it's going to bring some change into your life. So um, we're going to talk more next time um, about how we put in place the elements that we need to bring about consistent change and how do we make change in our life and hang on to it. This is one of them, hard boundaries. I'll see you guys next time.